Apple Reminders, it's a powerful task management application that is provided when you've got iOS and macOS. Today, we're gonna to dive into three ways that you can optimize your Apple task management and dive a little bit deeper into the app that you may know and love already. My name is Francesco D'Alessio and welcome to Keep Productive. If you wanna subscribe, you can check out our channel below and all of our newsletters that you can join up to after this video. But we're gonna dive into Apple Reminders and how to take it a step further. So I've broken this down into three parts. I wanted to start with the smart list abilities and how to really optimize it, giving you a few examples, then to dive into the template function, and finally finishing off with some of the sharing and messaging abilities that you might not know about. So let's start with the smart lists. Now in Apple Reminders, you have the ability to create a smart list. And this is actually really um, a really favorite amongst many of the GTD users. For those who don't know, Getting Things Done is a concept and a book written by David Allen in the 1990s. And the concept behind it is very much a framework on how to be productive, but one of the elements inside of it is context. Now, inside of the smart list, you can create these filters so that anything that follows these guidance, whether that's tags, time, location, due dates, you can basically create a list that is suited for your needs. And it very much correlates to the GTD contexts, um, the actual uh, philosophy of it. And you can use that for the context you might create. So for example, if you're someone that commonly goes around in Ubers quite often, and you try to do five minute tasks that are on your phone, you could add a tag of phone and maybe an amount of time, like estimate amount of time, like five to 10 minutes. And what you can do is you can create a smart list and every task that you add to your reminders, whether that's through Siri or through other methods, will basically be brought up in that smart list, which is great because when you're in that cab, and you're driving home, you can find all of the tasks that can be, require your phone and require five minutes to do. This is a really interesting concept. And if you're looking to maybe get some stuff done and remove that maybe uh, barrier to entry of, okay, what do I have? How much time have I got? How much energy have I got? This is how you can use context in that manner. So smart list can be really helpful and Apple got it really tied down in this function. So the second feature is templates and it's actually really useful for when you're trying to replicate a list or a checklist each time. So for example, if you're somebody that goes to create a recipe every single time, you could make a checklist and create a template from it by going to the top right hand corner and hitting make a template. Now from here, each time you want to replicate this again, you can build it from a template, which is helpful because you've got all the steps and processes and you can go down that checklist really easily. A lot of people might like this for even for work purposes in being able to run through a checklist, a simple one, because a lot of people don't tend to use many of the high-end productivity tools that their employees might not like, but they do have some like Apple reminders on access and they're comfortable using something like that. So that's something that a lot of people don't really know about templates and that can use. So that might help you to really save a bit of time and optimize your Apple reminders abilities. Now, finally, when it comes to sharing, you can share your lists with other people. This is great for university, for your flatmates maybe, and even for anyone else who you collaborate often with. I might create one for groceries because we're constantly doing that. But that's a great example, groceries. And one of the things you can do is actually go to the granular level of creating a task. And whenever it is mentioned or brought up, this could be a recurring task, you can have it pop up whilst you're messaging the person. Now this is really useful because if you've got like, um, for example, a task of booking event tickets, and you and your friend are delaying it and delaying it and delaying it, you could create that so that it pops up in messaging. And that's really helpful because if you're doing that so routinely, messaging is the place that you typically need reminding on. So it's great to add a contact to the actual task. And that's something that a lot of people don't know about. So there are three ways to begin to optimize your Apple reminders. Hopefully this video was helpful. Now, before we go, as you can imagine, we're trying to get as many people to join up, keep productive as possible. We've got over 300,000 people subscribed to the channel and it'd be really amazing to have you as a subscriber. So please hit subscribe after today's video and do enjoy our full Apple Reminders video if you fancy diving into the full extent of this powerful application that Apple provide. 
Anyway, folks, a big, big thank you, and I'll talk to you in a future video. Cheerio.